welcome back to another episode of Black Nerd Fridays. Listen, I got to say this again. I love that intro. Uh, again, shout out to Suds. Can't Suds. wait to get back on here. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you. That intro is crazy. Every time I look at it, I get reminded. Yo, I can't wait to get into my stuff that I'm reviewing that you that you ship this way. That's why I ask you. Your address the same because I got some things coming that way soon. You know what I mean? Let's so, get it, man. Let's get it. <laughs> before we get into that, let's, let's talk about what we're talking about today. Come on, man. Bubble. Come on, bro. This movie... I'm going to say less. Bubble. The spiral <laughs> of life. And you'll we'll figure out, what, you know, once you watch the movie, you'll understand where that, that title comes from and why I called it that. But we're going to get into this, man. Like I said, Netflix has been doing a thing as far as animes. They've been knocking it out the park. I haven't seen one bad one, in my opinion. Like, they've just been doing their thing. So that's what we're talking about today. So as, as usual, what you drinking on, brother? Oh, man, you know, I had to show it, man. I had to... Um... <laughs> Had to get it. This uh, shout out to Drake's Barrel House uh, in San Leandro, California. I just actually shout out to Miguel, assistant head brewer. Shout out to Devin A, the head brewer. Uh, just talked to them actually uh, yesterday. Got a chance to to see, to keep pushing. I know they're busy right now. Uh, this uh, supply chain is affecting everybody. Mm-hmm. People are people uh, people getting let go. People leaving. So they was uh they've been working heavy, uh doing a lot. They've been canning and brewing. Okay. So they've been in the cellar and on the packing line. So shout out wow. to them and the whole squad. But I'm I'm drinking there uh upward and onward. This one has been barrel aged though. Uh it's Imperial Imperial Stout. It's not the 14 that I think I sent you, uh the Ambarana, <laughs> but this one right here is 13%. So I'm gonna just pull up, man. And I'm gonna let you do you. But I was actually not gonna drink this because <laughs> I was yeah. like I thought it has, some, I mean, it has some stuff to do, but I was like, you know what? I'm about to pull up. I ain't got to do that till tomorrow. And uh, let's get it, man. Let's get man, it's it. It's early over there, you know. It's oh yeah, early it's right here. early, man. It's ten, early. you know, it's ten o'clock over <laughs> here, brother. <laughs> Look, as 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 uh, Dr. Crime Professor Hunter say, good morning, Nubians. You know, all across the world. But good morning, blurs and all nerds all across the world. Exactly. We don't know what time it is, what times on you watching. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, all that good stuff. So I'm sipping on something, uh, not local, but. Fat Hands Brewery, this is their Bumbleberry uh, Honey Blueberry L. Very light and refreshing. And to me, perfectly paired with this movie, what we're talking about. Just light, refreshing, fantasy. Puts you in the world of um, a good mood, good spirit. So drinking something in honor of that and old to that. And, you know, Suds is good at theming things correctly when it comes to picking beers and stuff like that to pertain to the theme. Here we go. Yeah, Cheers, yeah. bro. Both got some good pours. Good. Check that yeah. out. Uh, you know, that dark uh, stout life, you know. What up, Brick? High ABV life. You know we have bought it day. every All day of the day long. and the week. So Beautiful. Beautiful nose on that. Uh, man, I can't even wait to get into mine. I don't even talk about that because that's going to get reviewed. That's definitely going to be reviewed. So as always, what's your good, bad, and ugly of Bubble? Man, the <laughs> I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the bad first. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna say the pacing. I think I fell asleep uh, when um um I got to get her name right. It's not Mew. Tells her name. Uh, Huta. Huta. Yeah, when Huta was introduced. Um, I mean the way the way the character was introduced, I was like, oh, that's that that uh that's what's up. Okay, we got a sentient sentient bubble. Um, mm-hmm. And then, but then from there, I think it was just that the pacing was, it went from very high pace with the parkour going on and getting a lot of uh, quick flashbacks and quick understanding of why uh, teenage boys in particular, and you got some, also some adult males in there too, mm-hmm. and very, uh, very one or two or very little females in this area of uh, Tokyo. Uh, but just the pacing to me was kind of when Huta was, was, was brought to it. I would have loved some more interaction with the flashback of why this sentient bubble interacted uh, with uh, uh, Hibika, Hibikai. Uh, er, uh, if they would have did that earlier, I think that that it would have paced it out well. But mm-hmm. uh, outside of that, the pace was uh, was not that great when um, uh, Huta came in, and then just you know, just that understanding. Uh, the good though is definitely going to be the parkour was bar none. I was like, man, this is some wild stuff. Now I got real crazy when Hibikai, Hibikai and Huta were both doing it. I was like, this is just, this is just. I don't even know if real parkour people can do all that, um, yeah. and, and that and that level. But it was, it was a, it was a wonderful nod to par- parkour. It was a wonderful nod to 
uh, imagery when it comes to surroundings uh, that that they did a bubble. So shout out, and I did not write down all of the uh, the artists and the and the director directing team on that, but they did a wonderful job of of doing this uh, homage or this um, yeah this homage to little the little mermaid the little mermaid the actual one that we as Americans really don't read because we only think of Disney. Mm -hmm. um, so that one actually, mo and actually most European uh, are, are, yeah, European or Anglo-Saxon uh, ways of like uh, Pinocchio, Little Mermaid, things like that. They all end terribly <laughs> yeah. uh, for, yes, for the person. Like it's not uh, the Kumbaya thing that Disney tries to make it. So I was really, uh, I was really appreciative of that because I never read the Little Mermaid, the, the, the actual story uh, mm -hmm. outside of Disney. And then just my ugly, I'm going to go with, I really wanted more of the, um, I really wanted to know more about the actual uh, bubbles or what they call them, the entities, because the, um, the antagonist, which you really didn't even, you know, it wasn't really uh, that. It wasn't really. Yeah, it wasn't really an antagonist, but it was really just a matter of you get this pr presentation of this antagonist. Um, of the other part of the bubbles. You don't even know if the bubbles as a whole are all individually entities. You don't know if it's just Huta and her sister, because she did say sister. So I don't mm -hmm. even know if Huta is a her. Huta did, uh, you know, spoiler alerts as we always do, because it's always spoilers. <laughs> we need to just start putting spoilers on the title. title. But yeah. I mean, she, uh, <laughs> uh, the bubble entity known as Huta took on a representation of a human from not only Hebe, Hebe Kai's breath, but also with a picture that a uh, poster that was sawed on a bus that, uh, so that was, um, it was just, it, I, I wanted to know more about the entities and why they even came to earth. Like it was mm -hmm. just crazy. You know what I mean? It's like they're, and they didn't leave. You know what I mean? So shout out to that. I really like that. It's like, Oh, everything's kumbaya, but is it really, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I like yeah. that. So that's all I got to say, man. I like that, man. That was very well said and thought out. Like, in my opinion, I'm going to save the good for last. Uh, the ugly, I agree with you in the aspect of I was trying to figure out what was going on with the bubbles. Um, where did they come from? And they kind of left you in the dark with that. I guess they left it up to your interpretation or imagination to figure out where these bubbles came from and why they were there. But I believe, in my opinion, that stems into this spiral thing, which we'll talk about later on. Um, as far as the life cycles. But anyways, um, I didn't like the fact that they left you in the dark with that. Like, I really wanted to know more about him because that was very intriguing for me, especially when you considered Uta saying, this is my sister. And apparent, according to, you know, the Little Mermaid folklore and fairy tale and all that stuff, she had several sisters. So I'm assuming um, there was way more than what we've seen, just that one, again, spoiler alert, it was just one there. I'm assuming it was more than that. Mm. The bad was um, these were pretty much all all kids, teens, you know, your early teens. They there doing what they're doing, parkour, which shout out to them on that aspect. It was all mm. teens. But you had a couple adults and it made me feel like they were just living by themselves. They're in this this city, uh, Tokyo, and it's affected the worst by this this bubble. Um. They didn't get into information on that. They kind of left it kind of, again, up to interpretation or your imagination to, to figure out why this was here. So you have these teens living in the city and they're doing parkour just for fun. To, But it's a, it was also a survival thing, which is also interesting as well, where whoever won that first race, they got the rice. They won other people's rice, which means that they're living in a pretty rough environment where they're struggling to survive and they're betting on food and, and different things to trade or to use as a incentive to say, Hey, if I win this race, this is what I gain. And there were different teams. So that right there, I didn't like you either. That was my bad. My good is first off, the colors in here were absolutely beautiful. The artwork was like, it was realistic when you were looking at, uh, Hibiki, you're looking at Uta, and even the people, their movements and the fluidity, that was just, oh, man, I, I can't even describe it. I've seen other animes like that that have that sense of reality when it comes to animation, and I can't think of them offhand, but some of the characters reminded me of, like, a little bit of Cowboy Bebop influence mm. just based upon how real they look, 
but that that movement that they had and in the colors and just the music it was it was absolutely perfect it was beautiful and i think that's what made the storyline much better because it is a fantasy world it is a um not uh, it is a fiction reality where these this thing happens so that fit perfectly in my opinion into what the storyline was mm. so with that being said what were your thoughts on the opening scenes amazing man i mean mm-hmm. <laughs> i i, I the artwork it just you can't say too much you can't say anything bad about it i think it was just a beautiful piece i think how it started it was amazing the the whole aspect of parkour these bubbles which you really didn't <laughs> you really didn't understand like these bubbles at all and like then you get that understanding later on of it being an entity and and all these things it's just but just the beginning scenes as we're talking about man just, just I, i'm just bar none man bar, bar mm-hmm. none it reminded me of um the princess mononoke is that what we yes uh, Yes. Like it, it's like a better, it's a it's an updated version of Princess Mononoke, uh, just because the artwork at that time for Princess Mononoke was fire. Mm-hmm. This is just taking it to another level because you could actually see not only the drawings. I don't even know if they did any three. They probably did use some type of three D re- rendering. Yeah. You just, be, yeah. but because it was blended well, in, again, key focus to uh, when they when they talk about doing Yasuke over again and all that. You got you got to blend these things well mm-hmm. um, because it just makes it makes it look to to <clears throat> Mr. Refine's point that the motion like when you blend something well it doesn't look like it's fake with the right. motion it doesn't look robotic it actually, it's the fluidity of it is great so shout shout yeah. out to that man I, I agree with you on that too and I think for me you know they started off with kind of like the universe where you see Saturn and just different yep. things going on like a cosmic mm-hmm. effect. And then you went right into a bubble. And then after that, they showed Hibiki underwater and you had Uta there. And that introduction was kind of a, once we found out that was like the, the, the backstory, but it was a prequel to what happened and, and, and how they ended up meeting, but you didn't find out that true story until later on. So that introduction to me set me up to say, this beautiful cinematography, the imagery is going to lead me to something good because if you're starting off at this level of animation, like you said, with that blending of some of it was 3D, some of it was 2D, but it was so perfect that it looked real. And if you're starting off like that, in my opinion, I'm like, yo, this is going to be crazy, crazy, crazy. Even if I didn't give it, let's say I had to give it, you know, one to 10 and 10 being the highest, one being the lowest, I'd give it a, a eight out of 10 based upon a artwork and the way that they just were able to draw that fantasy world to make you believe that this was something real in my opinion so that opening scene sets you up for foreshadowing of what was going to happen in the future as well as like just what this world's going to look like you know and for myself when i'm reading a book i like to get brought into what where is the story going to head and if i can imagine that by the words or in this case watching a movie i can visualize myself being there that helps out a lot. And I think they, they hit the mark on that one. Now, this question is a perfect question to a segue into what was going on. Did other cities or countries experience the bubble effect? Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they talked about that in the show, mm-hmm. the movie. Uh, the, the bubbles spread across the world. It was, it was just the, spoiler alert, the explosion, <laughs> the explosion that occurred was only in Tokyo, uh, downtown Tokyo. Tokyo City uh, and that explosion, which we'll get to in the probably get to in the questions, but that occurred because of an inner in the interaction. Um, Mm -hmm. And and that interaction was was very subtle and and about curiosity. But again, you get this aspect of the antagonist who uh, whom it seemed was like, no, we don't interact. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We're here for a reason, which we still do not know what that reason is. And we're trying to figure it out. So. Yeah, I, I didn't know that there were in other cities. Maybe I missed this. Um, I knew it was Tokyo, which in my understanding, that was the only place that it happened in Japan. But my question was, did it happen in other countries and places around the world? Yeah, I not the exp- not that. the explosion, not yeah. the explosion, but the bubbles themselves. It fell all over the planet. OK. And, and then it just that um, the encasement of Tokyo City only happened in Tokyo because yeah. of. Uh, the situation that occurred um, 
and that, that interaction. So yeah. like that, so that that's that was the only one that dealt with it. So pretty much all the bubbles, which we don't know if they're entities or not, mm-hmm. um, they all dissipated and went back to that one location because they were being called back to to that that way. Yeah. Too. Which is weird. I, I really felt that weird. Like I said, and maybe I missed this because I was awake. I wasn't falling asleep or nothing. Maybe I missed that conversation about what happened. Yeah, man. The hope it said five years ago, brother. And then they, yeah, and then they what I'm saying in. is, like, I felt like I it, it just went over my head. Maybe I was too into the animation. I missed mm. that that dialogue or something. And that must have been my culture talking. I do it all the time. That's why we teammates. You know? Yeah. That's why, we got, that's why it's a trio out here. Everybody watching see something different. Right, right, because I, I, I missed that for whatever reason, but I thought that was an interesting uh, thing. Now, here's what I really wanted to talk about, which I'll tie in at the end. How true was the world gathers through destruction and restoration cycle? Mm. How true is that? Man, um, at least for at least for this um, movie, that, that cycle mm. of destruction and restoration, you don't really, you didn't really see it because, again, the focus was on the... Um, the the area of Tokyo that had the Tokyo Tower, um, that was the focus. I mean, the outside world, because nothing seemed to have happened uh, outside of the explosion that happened in the uh, heart of Tokyo. You didn't really see if the world was um, just moving along or what. I mean, and even for Tokyo, uh, you know, <clears throat> again, I always keep saying spoiler. Alert, but even for Tokyo themselves, even having those kids there, those kids were all orphans from this explosion. But then again, the government was utilizing them uh, to get more data of the anomaly that happened so they can figure out why it happened and if it'll happen again. So it was more so like we have all these. <laughs> I mean, the restoration as far as like is is deteriorating in that bubble sphere. But reality is, is that because they can't, they don't want to access it because they think it's dangerous and they're not going to rehabilitate it. Plus, you have these uh, these vortexes or these black holes that you don't know if it takes you to your death, another dimension, any of that. Yeah. Uh, but that all came into play from one from the antagonist, too, that you find out that that's just the, how powerful the antagonist is. And you just like, man, this is just it's just it's, it's crazy. So, I mean, to that to that question. They didn't. We don't like you said. The rest of the world didn't experience that, and then the Tokyo City. I think they were just trying to get people away from that area uh, as far as possible. So I don't know what they built. We do know they blocked it off, though, um, uh, uh, as we as we saw in that other anime that uh, Suds really liked with the dudes that were like hit uh, hitman. Like you find out at the end. I mean, you found out in one of the episodes that they just blocked that city off, and it's just like the yeah. others live here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Is, is pretty crazy. So, no, I didn't see any restoration in the after the destruction. Zero. I, I seen zero. Um, that, to me, was like, you know, the circle of life just in general. But let's relate that to our current society right now. Not even our current society, but our world, just in general. Uh, you got all through history, you always hear about wars and death and just different things. And you have these cycles where there's, there's ebbs and flows of life where... Mm. There's a high reason for people to die, whether it's influenza, whether it's yellow fever, whether it's a war, whether it's, you know, the Holocaust, <laughs> just, you know, what I'm saying force things that even genocides in Rwanda and stuff like that. Yeah. But then where is the restoration? Where is the the restarting of, of cities and, and um, worlds and, and starting new new beginnings of life? Where does that come in? Minus minus births, babies, et cetera. We didn't see much restoration. I've seen a lot more destruction than anything in this movie. And I felt as if that was kind of a, a indicator to how we live. Not a lot of restoration, more destruction than anything. And when we involve ourselves in whatever it is we're doing, and we, we have limits. In, in nature, there's limits to everything. But humans like to be involved in a lot of stuff and control things, which causes in, in effect, this sort of situation, which I'm going to have to rewatch it again and see what I missed. But thinking about that aspect, you say you caused this destruction, which now you are forced to live in and you're in this bubble. And the people who did not cause it had to live in it. And to them, they turned this, this ugliness into beauty, parkour, fighting you know, for food, uh, having different ways to establish relationships. 
So I didn't see much restoration, but I've seen a whole lot of destruction. And I felt as though that mirrored our world right now. And it was a perfect explanation. And one thing I forgot to touch on that you mentioned earlier when you were talking about The Little Mermaid. There's a movie you might have seen. It's one of my favorite animes ever. We might have to talk about this one. It's called Ponyo. You ever heard of that? Say it one more time. Ponyo. P-O-N-Y-O. Ponyo. No, I can't. Ponyo. I can't say I have. I got to watch it. <laughs> I'm a, you got to watch that one. There is some Little Mermaid sort of ties in there. And it's it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful anime. One of my favorites. Like, it's not fighting or nothing like that. It's just one of those things. You ever seen one called, I believe it's the Red Turtle or the Sea Turtle? Something like that. Yeah, I think I've seen something okay, like that. Okay, so yeah. Ponyo is similar to that, but more detailed and a little bit more... Um, human emotion and connection involved. You have to watch that. So this reminded me of that where there's this entity. We don't know if it's alive or dead and all that. And ties in there. I forgot to mention that earlier. So here's what I really wanted to know. Who in the hell were, were the Undertakers? Like, who were they? Right? <laughs> hey, the Undertakers was fire, man. I mean, them boots was like high heel boots type of situation. It reminded yeah. me of like... Like the 70s, people wearing them, them, uh, them platforms, platforms <laughs> them platform joints. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, the Undertakers to me were just, um, they were social media, uh, the, they were the, the, the yeah, they were the, um, not the, uh, not the entity. What is, what is it called when someone's like your, like your sent, Sentinel or Vanguard or the embodiment, mm -hmm. excuse me, the embodiment of what social media, uh, will become, in, in my opinion, because again, they were, getting paid to be in the bubble mm -hmm. uh, and they had they had equipment that they got uh to uh from outside the, the outside of the encasement of uh downtown tokyo i mean of uh where tokyo tower was they literally utilized the bubbles uh with that technology to help push it and it was it was crazy man and they would um they had no care in the world i mean even uh, towards the end of the show where they were like you can buy these boots off of us uh, <laughs> they were they were trained for I mean like, you could tell they had no emotion if you even think about it but they yeah. had emotion but their facial expressions didn't show any emotion um, and I just uh, the Undertakers were fire to me actually um, they I didn't really see they again they were just the, like the they're the group in any type of um race uh, uh any type of race of uh like driving or like a mech battle uh thing mm -hmm. like i remember tsunami had that show where they would uh, I igx or something um so they were just like the they were just like the, the everyday uh people the bad guys quote unquote the people that everybody hated because they because they quote unquote cheated but i just i liked them man i was like oh they getting they get into the bag mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean they get into the bag I mean, and they really didn't like kill nobody. Now they did put them in positions that were like, "Hey, you can make that choice if you want to jump or not." Yeah. But, uh, all in all, I just like their their dynamic. I mean, it was very it was very uh, simple. You still don't you know that they were being uh, sourced from outside, and it really didn't look like they were fighting for any food or uh, anything because like they had like a submarine joint. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that was fire, bro. Like yeah. it was just yeah they was they was there just for inter they were there for views clicks. Um, and money <laughs> definitely they Nothing were extremely else. interesting like just watching that whole dynamic with them uh they didn't talk much and when they did they spoke to their hand in this little speaker they had kind of like a cyclops mask on with just one eye which was interesting within itself and it made you wonder what happened to them why they didn't use their own voices why they didn't talk um we understood that they were getting paid to be inside of this bubble to do parkour, which they also cheated in at the same effect because he began his squad. The, the what was it? The blue wave uh, blue wave was getting busy, like just naturally hopping and jumping and flipping on doing whatever they were doing. These guys was using special boots that were propelled would look like water propulsion or something like that. Bubbles, man. The yeah, bubbles, it was, it was crazy as hell. It was cheating with that aspect, but they were <laughs> also on point like that last one of the last battles that they had where they were going against each other and they were moving as a unit. It was that one main one. And I believe might've been a female. She was on point, like running, like, okay, we all going here. We all doing this. All right. Next meet us at this zone. And it was like, zone two, four, five. Yeah. And, and it <laughs> was out with it. And then 
on the same time, you had them trying to dodge. You had the Blue Wave team, which is Hibiki and and I uh, can't remember the other names. Makoto, which Blue, Makoto, Blue, Blue, Blue Blaze, Blue Blaze, yeah, Blue, something Blue Wave, Blue Blaze, Burn Blue it Blue, all, something. <laughs> They, they was doing their thing on the side, but they were trying to avoid the ant lion pits. They're trying to avoid those black holes, all that. And on the other hand, Undertaker's like, no, nah, we ain't even worried about it. We hop in here. We jump in here. We got the equipment to do this. And we get views. And we get paid to do this at the same time. But they never really explained, minus the fact that we're getting paid, where they came from, why they were there, and a little bit more backstory on it, which kind of had me involved in my, my bad, where you're putting characters in here and you're not giving really your context or storyline as to why they're really there, minus they're getting paid. So I wanted to know more about them because I thought they were sweet as hell. And originally, in my opinion, I thought they were the antagonists, and it turns out they really weren't. Mm-hmm. They just were doing what they was doing. Get into the bag. Yeah, that pretty much was it. So in your opinion, was Hibiki's audio sensitivity a gift or a curse? I think it was, I mean, a gift for in, in the movie. And I, I think the auto, audio sensitivity, he was like border, it seemed like he was on borderline being deaf, deaf, excuse me. Um, and just that when he talked about opening up about him going through all these tests uh, with his mom and hearing, and pretty much his mom just didn't want him to have the issue of deafness or auto sensitivity that he had. Oh, okay. <laughs> Poho says she's watching Spidey. Um, but yeah, man, it was it was it was something that I, I love the fact when he took off his earphones um in the beginning scenes of introducing them uh us being introduced to him, it was it was it was nice, man, because he took it off, but all it, it was like now he could actually hear. So before he could not. Now he could hear everything, and it was it's like if a person was blind and all of a sudden they could see everything. And people people want it's like we as uh, uh people who may not have a um disability, like we're like, man, if you could see the world would be so much better, or you could hear, or you could do this or or that. It's like if you train your body and, and your body has trained itself actually, because you know, we're just kind of like a sh- we're just like this entity in this shell, but the body does all the movement, it'll, <laughs> it'll cut us off if we if we if we if we ain't listening to it um mm-hmm. but for but for him to have to adjust to that and to keep his earphones on so that he wouldn't have to get all these sounds um rushing into him that he, he's never really been able to hear clearly man that was amazing so i think it was definitely a, <clears throat> it was definitely a gift um i wanted them to it was almost kind of like it's like superman-esque in the sense of how uh, uh, General Zod in the Superman movie when he came to Earth and like he just he's hit with all these like he can hear everything that's going yeah. on and like his he can smell it was like it was crazy and that's mm-hmm. what I enjoyed about it and I wish they would have they dove in that a little bit but I like how they introduced it as like he still had to adjust that's why he isolated himself a lot from everybody outside of his own feelings of. Uh, things that happen, but yeah, he definitely, definitely a gift. I'm going with the gift too, based upon first off the introduction of him um, when they were starting off the movie. After you seen Uta meet him in the water and stuff like that, and he's like mermaid. First, next scene he showed was them um, doing the battle, which I forgot the name they had for. It wasn't called parkour; it's called like death core or something. No, it's a uh, battle, battle core. core. Battle core. Okay, so your introduction of all the rest of them, and you see this guy. They're like the only person that can do that would be him. And he already with the headphones on, just chilling, just calm. Hella Ooh. high up though. Let's not Way, lie. Yeah, like that right there was again was a foreshadowing of what was going on, what would happen in the future. But more importantly, his audio sensitivity was it was a gift because once he took those headphones off and he got used to being adjusted to all these sounds, he was able to function better. More importantly, on top of that, the area that he liked to go to for peace, for calmness, to be like grounded and reconnected was all the way at the top. And it was a bunch of beautiful flowers and plants and vines all around. I thought that was dope. And it reminds me of how I am. Like, I like to go outside and just be in my backyard where I don't necessarily need music. I just want to hear the sounds of nature. Just watch Mm. the bees as they go from flower to flower sit there and absorb just whatever sounds are going on without the cars and the the, the uh, construction work that might be going on outside. I want to hear nature at its at its finest and its peak. 
And I feel like he was able to focus in on those things, which allowed him to be able to kind of have a super sensitivity, if you will, as far as his physical ability. That's why he was able to perform a little better. Maybe he could gauge if the wind was blowing this way. All right, let me flip or turn my body just a little bit like that. So I personally thought it was a gift and I thought it was a beautiful thing, even though he had went through the tests, the MRIs, all that stuff. And I even was thinking he might have been a little bit on the spectrum as well based mm-hmm. upon the stuff that was going on, because he was sensitive to more than just the audio wise. Gotcha. So yeah, I, that, that was a gift in my opinion. Now, what I want to know is what's your thoughts on the song from Uta? Oh, come he on. was the one who was singing. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that thing was fire, bro. I, yeah. thought, I thought they was going to put some bass behind that and you go hear like, like some Legend of Zelda was about to kick right. off. I'll be in there like, ah, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> it, uh, no, definitely. It, it's definitely something that they, um, I know a lot of anime. I'm trying to think of the two the mm-hmm. anime I haven't watched yet with the uh, the, the with the black the black girl and the white girl and there one's a piano player the other one sings. Mm-hmm. Um, and that anime won uh, uh, won a lot of awards or critically acclaimed just because again the music and I think what we're getting back to with anime and I think a lot of people there's so many genres of anime that's why I, I enjoy talking to people and they're like man you still watch an anime and i just break down how the anime is really a reflection of the society of our species through the eyes of uh japanese people who a lot of times don't interact with black people so when you see a black person drawn that way it's because someone interacted with a black person or wanted to not show black people in a way that the like the dragon ball z uh era when they when they drew um the black, the black, one of the black general guys who wasn't actually drawn as bad, minus you know the huge, humongous lips, over characterized lips, or Mister Popo, Mister um, Popo, yeah, or I mean, because that's all everybody's like black Mister Popo, but there was actually a black general in the Red Ribbon Army who was who, who fought Goku when he was a Piccolo child. Was black, in my opinion, that's yeah, and Pic- yeah, everybody, everybody believed Piccolo okay. black. That's just yeah. fact, you know. So you know, I'm, I'm mad that they always trying to you know. But anyway, <laughs> we just go. To <laughs> you know, my boy Piccolo don't get no buns, okay, no yeah. love, and Zero. everybody in this species is male and they asexual. And I'm just like, really? That's yeah. what doing? And he got to be the father figure. But anyway, as I move yeah. on, the music. I mean, the music was already there. I think that they used the soundtrack was great. The singing was not overdone. They didn't try to make a whole type of song out of it. It was just a melody. And it, mm-hmm. it was a it was a tone or a tune tuning that allowed uh, Huta and Hibikai to really be connected because that is what he could hear uh, as a child. So no, nah, hands down, I was in there ha, ha, every time she did it. You know what I mean? It was like it just reminded me of that Legend of Zelda about to kick off, bro. Like with the and I was about to be like, man, some some horns about to come in here or something. Yeah. Somebody about to drop them eight oh eights. This thing about to be slapping, but it did yeah. not do that. Uh, just right. the melody. <laughs> and it, it's funny, though, too, because when you think about the song, just in general, that is the introduction of those two together in the first place. This is where they introduced the fact that, you know, when they had that backstory where he was walking to, in that building and you see uh, kind of a recreation, a 3D recreation of what, what was going on at the time. Excuse me. And then you see, oh, here's the song right here. It's coming from this bubble. Oh, okay. Let me reach out and touch the bubble. And then, oh, this is the, the explosion right here. So you were introduced from beauty and then here is destruction at the same time. But that song was dope. It was pure melody. It was nothing else going on. And I was hoping to stay like that because I actually liked the, the Little Mermaid, the Disney one. Um, and one of the things that I liked about it was her scene. She didn't go into a long, like they normally do in musicals for Disney, where they have a whole song and the person is singing and stuff like that. She just was, oh, so I like that. You know what I mean? It was real simple. This reminded me of that same vibe. So I thought the song was dope. And that was the uh, destruction later on. That that song, that song was coming again. And it was time pretty much to go back home from what I've seen. So that, that was that was beautiful. Now, what is <laughs> HQ that Makoto kept referring to? It's another hole that they just left in the story. What What, what is HQ? I think you mute it right now. Yeah, you mute it. My bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. HQ was uh, no. HQ was just the Japanese government really um, attempting to figure out what's going on. I don't know. I, I don't know how old her and Glenn. Well, Glenn was pretty old. He actually probably was a kid 
when he got involved uh, when he lost his leg. Uh, and shout out to Glenn because Glenn is definitely an underrated character. He's kind of like every every sensei or uh, or a person in an anime who got the eyes closed or something, or like you think they're like weak and then they turn out to be like one of the strongest people in the mm-hmm. in the anime. Um, but yeah, HQ is definitely uh, Japanese government trying to figure out that source and the monitor so that explosion wouldn't happen again. Um, and just trying to figure out what the hell these bubbles were, because obviously these bubbles could create just massive destruction out of nowhere. And they were trying to figure it out. I have no idea what HQ is, and that's a perfect segue to this other question that I have. But I don't I don't know what it was. I felt as if it was somebody that they were specifically communicating with, not not the government, but just, I don't know, an outside source that they were able to talk to because they was on that big old big ass battleship you know driving around and then you had undertakers on sub submarine so i don't know what who or what hq was it's just something i wanted to know now what was uta really because we see her as a human um she visualizes as a human and show her as a human but if hibiki touches her she turns back into bubbles wherever he touched that. I mean, she a bubble. <laughs> she a bubble entity, bro. She. I, I don't know, man. She, she's an entity that we don't know. I mean, like she, she um, the Little Mermaid was something that um, uh, what was the uh, what was the female character's name again? The, uh, uh, Ariel. No, no, the one that the one that was calling HQ. Makoto. Yeah, Makoto. Like when she read that story to her, it just kind of like opened up her eyes because it had to deal with the, the one like. The little mermaid fell into the ocean and turned into like straight up foam bubbles and died. Um, she was just she could relate to that because she was a a bubble, at least for what we see. But yeah, I think that's just she was just that entity that she took on that form uh, to because she interacted with he uh, Hibikai in that way to where she took on his breath. It was almost like a kiss, pretty much when he breathed out for his last breath, mm-hmm. uh, and she took on that form because she it was an interaction with human DNA. So it was almost like I don't even believe that Uta knew that Uta could shape shift <laughs> like that. <laughs> um so that was um that's just what I think, man. Just an entity that Ooh. was just yeah, just just used I mean they 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 didn't they didn't look at themselves in a mirror and be like this is what I am. It's like I just exist. <laughs> like yeah. That's perfect because two things. Let me say this one first. She did get jealous when she noticed the Makoto hugging on him. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She got jealous as hell. That's a fact. <laughs> uh, number one, she's definitely sentient, and you just you just made me think of something that my mind wasn't on. I didn't have that perspective. To your eternity, you watched that, right? Yeah, bro. Same, Come, on, same, watched, same. Yeah. Come on, we reviewed that joint. You right? right. <laughs> so same, same concept. That did, that wasn't even on my mind. And by the way, shout out to to your eternity because that's coming back on in the fall. I can't wait. But anyways, uh same concept where she reacts with something and gains that that knowledge of that shape and form and maybe can continue to change into that later on um but yeah that's that's probably what it is and i had no idea that wasn't even on my mind i didn't consider that that aspect um and more importantly she was uh, a very innocent like just being she was like a newborn um, and Makota was her her teacher, her mother, where she's like, OK, I'm reading to you, the little mm-hmm. mermaid. You're getting this introduction into the world. Despite it being so ugly all around us, there is beauty. And hey, here's a prince. This guy is super sensitive, uh, audio sensitivity. Here's a prince right here. You are the princess. And I just I thought it was crazy, but they needed to elaborate more, in my opinion, on what she was, but despite being just a bubble. Now. We've been kind of debating about this in, internally. Who the hell was the main antagonist? Because I still don't know. Like nobody, you know. man. Like that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, as I pour up my second glass of this damn 32 ounce uh, uh, crowler. Shout out, you know, to 13 percent at, at 10 in the morning. Ain't no yeah, come on, man. You know, we, this how we do, man. High high ABV life all day, like brick state. You know all I mean? day. Put it on the shirt. Um, no, nobody was a antagonist. I think it was more so. At least from the the interaction between Huta and her and uh, Huta's sister, because I mean we don't just call Huta her because she took on the form of a, mm-hmm. a female um, <clears throat> female uh, idol, I believe. Um, yeah, I mean they. 
I think they came to Earth. Why? We don't know. Because they, to your point, in the introductory scene of like showing the stars and the cosmos, they actually showed the outside of the of the planet Earth yes. <laughs> and space yes. and all the bubbles. Probably they were probably before the explosion, they probably were circulated around the entire planet outside. But because mm -hmm. of the explosion, they were all isolated in this one thing because the interaction happened that her sister didn't want to occur. So I don't know if her sister is like the protector of the species of, the, of their species. And they had and she, and uh, her sister was like, you know, I'm the leader. You interact with them. We're not supposed to do that. We're here for something. And we don't even know what it is um, whatsoever, because there was no conversation with her sister. But I love the way that uh, Uta's sister was shown like this, this overarching like menace like literally like the three eyes you know what i mean like that big yeah it was like it was like a black hole but it had eyes and it was like the music to when they showed it i was uh showed the entity i was like oh this is fire mm -hmm. but i think it was just the sister that she uh that uta called um this entity's sister it was i think it was just a protector um, but it was no, it was really no antagonist. It was just a misunderstanding. Of, it was two species interacting for the first time, but you don't know if the bubbles that came were here to absorb something or take something. I think they were just travelers and they were whatever they were searching for, because we won't know, you know, and that's mm -hmm. the good thing about a movie. Sometimes it's not, it's no need to dive deeper. It's to have us theorize and continue to tell people to watch uh, the movie and get their own theories. Yeah, I don't think there was. I don't think there was any antagonist uh, per se. I just think that there was uh, two groups, and the one didn't like what the other was doing because it was like pro it was rules and protocols, and it was a covenant. <laughs> yeah. uh, what you do, and uh, and Uta broke that covenant, so you know the sister wasn't having it, and you know, and I, you know me, man. I when I, I you know I love some absolute characters. You already know, Sunbeam. Bro. Sunbeam. <laughs> Some being, all right. <laughs> sister said, "Hey, you know that's not what we do out here. That is not what and you. It could be trauma from when they did do that, and they got like half of the species wiped out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He was breaking protocol. It's time to get in that ass. That's what yeah. it was. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't know what or who the main antagonist was, but it's funny because they kept making it seem as if the you know the sister was it. Like that was the end all be all, the main bad person." Even at the close to the end where uh, you've seen Uta and her in their, uh, I'm going to say, not original form, but in their form that visualizes them as being a female. And you can tell the sister was the taller, bigger one, which is kind of, you know, towering over her. Like, I'm the boss. This is what we're doing. And in your words, to your point, you're breaking protocol. I need to get you back in line. You know what I mean? You really we don't know. respect it. Yeah, you, you better put some respect on my name, my title. I'm the I'm the head bubble. <laughs> head bubble. You know what I mean? I'm the head bubble. You're gonna respect me. Well, hell of power though, bro. I gotta put you back in, in your place. Goddamn black holes. Come on now, man. Yeah, and, and it was crazy. And even that whole scene with the uh the, the three eye looking thing, that right oh. there was kind of dark, but it was also uh beautiful at the same time. So we don't know. We have no idea if there was a main antagonist. I'm just going with uh the head bubble, the queen bubble, the big queen sis. Bubble. That's what that was in my opinion, but it wasn't an antagonist at the same time. So that was beautiful. Now let's discuss this climactic ending. And I'm talking about the whole scene from when they when they said okay we're going to get this last thing because they had captured Makoto and it was like all right if you get this then you know you you good to do what you do. And they fought for that. What was your thoughts on that part? Oh, you talking about the last scene, like going to get Uta? You talking about the one with? Okay, yeah, you said Makoto, so I'm like, that's that was with Uta, the Undertaker. Yeah, but with U yeah, with Uta or Uto, like that was that was fire, man. Like Glenn, like I said, man, shout out to Glenn with the one with the robotic leg, though. Crazy, like, but they, but they, he was moving faster than he uh, Hibiki. Um, and you could tell he was very skilled, and that's why everybody looked up to him. But you didn't know that because he was always just in the background. Like I said, he was that character with the eyes closed, and then he opened his eyes and started going ham on everybody. And you like, oh wow. Um, but yeah, that just that whole setup of far is like Glenn. It, it all fall into what Glenn was attempting to do with HQ as far as his research go. Because the reason why he lost his leg is because he attempted to get close to Tokyo Tower 
to enter to figure out what's going on with his entity and his entity he almost got him but because of his ability uh the entity only took out the bubble only took out his leg instead of uh taking him um mm-hmm. but just that whole aspect i mean of course for me like the um the climactic slash anticlimactic aspect of uta uh taking over uh, you know spoiler alert taking over her sister um uh, and I, I don't know if it she uh uta ended her sister's uh life or it was just more so of like no now i'm in control and everybody listens to me yeah. because i don't think in the beginning uh uta and uta's sister it was they were too separate it wasn't it wasn't like um it might not even they even though uta may have said sister just because of the little mermaid it might have been the mother because at least in the ending the way uta took over all of the bubbles uh and really pretty much rewrote everything to just be uta's own personality it was it was more so of like maybe that was how the sister started off and then uta was just uh became that part of the entity became its own entity within itself and was like it, it's like with every every culture of every species there's always that one uh one entity in the species that's like i don't agree with was what we're doing or this is not we should do something different they always want to be exploring and curious and it's really because of that one <laughs> entity that the species transforms forever, whether good, bad, or indifferent. And I and and that to me was was really great, at least at the end. But just the parkour and the parkour took like a little bit of a dive, just because you had so many bigger pieces of like metal and and rock yeah. and all that. That so you couldn't. It's not really like oh, I'm doing my jump around, I'm hopping over, sliding through type of thing. It was like nah, this is. This is a life of death. I fall in this vortex. I'm I'm dead. So mm-hmm. it was more calculated. But I do like it, man. You know, you got to give Glenn his props. Uh, and overall, uh, it was again, it was a it was a it was a romantic climactic ending. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. And that's just I mean that's what you got. So again, but it's again it's a homage to the Little Mermaid. So I, yep. I expected nothing less uh, when it came to the uh, the ending. Yep, I agree with you a thousand percent. Um, Let's start off with with Glenn, man. Yo, that dude was skilled. I don't know how long he's been doing parkour, <laughs> but you can tell it's been a long time. He made them look like amateurs, mm. all, including Hibiki. Come on, man, for real. Like the way he was moving, it was so <laughs> on one leg, leg, brother. <laughs> yeah, and and that's the part that I respected because even as he was running, you seen his leg was kind of yes. stopping him a little bit, and that looked real. It wasn't fake, or it was a fake limp. It looked like somebody was really running with one leg and they recorded that with those little things they have on you to record that real movement. Yo, that was so fire. Then he sacrificed that leg again to give him that last push to give Hibiki that last push off his foot. And that just, that was beautiful. But then to add into Uta pretty much, you know, dying or I'm not going to say dying. She transitioned as we say, you know, transition, transition back into the bubble. But laying in a bed of flowers, just like Fine was on a vampire in the garden. That's right. Laying in a bed of flowers, which was beautiful. And you had all of the surrounding things. There was blue. The skies were pretty. The water was beautiful. It was just such a nice ending considering the the, 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 the path that they were heading on. You made you believe it was going to be something negative. It was, like you said, an an ode and homage to the Little Mermaid. And they hit the nail on the head perfectly on that. Now, last and final question: What did you take from this movie? Just in in our in our view and our perspective as as humans, but just watching this fantasy movie, was there any parallels? What did you take out of this movie? Yeah, it, it was hard. It, it was hard for me to like like critically deep dive just because I was in awe of all the colors and the and the um, and the uh, the movements that they captured. Um, but I think that interaction, as I mentioned before. Um, people that are, are excuse me, in, entities in the species that are different or have something that is not conce- uh, uh, considered normal uh, within the species, and then the, those two interact, like, and it just opened the world to something different. Good, bad, like I said, good, bad, or indifferent. It was different, and it was a change, but that change was still not understood. I mean, it was understood by the bubbles because the bubbles the sister the sister made that happen uh, because again protocol is broken 
from at least the bubble standpoint, but for humanity, it was like, man, what what the hell happened? First we see bubbles, now we see explosions, now we got this <laughs> big ass bubble encasing, yeah, uh, encasing this area. But it wasn't that you couldn't get through the to the bubbles. And again, spoiler alert: that Uta created that uh, encasing to stop her uh, her sister from really probably destroying all of humanity if we want to keep it on it. Um, so I just took away from that aspect that like inner, when you're different, like you, and you, and you meet somebody else that's different, like you can create, you can create magic, you can create chaos, but the thing is you create. Um, mm. And, it, and it's that for, for better or for worse, being stuck in your um, comfort zone are not, are not, being willing to just um, to be still, and that's again shout out to Dr. Greg Carr when mm. he talked about interacting with ancestors and everything. Be still, like literally when he uh, Hibaki was still and just listened, he was able to see things clearly, mm. uh, and that was like that was crazy. You know what I mean? And like the rest of humanity, it's like everybody else is just doing the same thing that humanity does. Should we kill it? Should we not kill it? Can we fight it? Can we destroy it? But everybody else that didn't that lost a family member, all those teenage boys that were in there because they didn't want to be in the world because they just didn't they felt out of place because their families were gone and the rest of the world. They all had their people so that they could hold on and they didn't want to be in an orphanage or really do, you know, maybe go through testing or whatever it is that society outside of the uh, big and big bubble wanted them to do. They didn't want to do it and they just wanted to run around and be uh, be free. But at the same time, society still provided them with food, water and everything like that and was u- using them to do research <laughs> on this. So it, yeah. it, it was two things. One, you can't one, no matter how far away you try to get away from society, like vampires in the garden, society is still influenced a lot of stuff that you do. You still have to interact with society. You can't be isolated 100 percent because society is either coming to break up that isolation or mm-hmm. you need something for society so that you can grow in a level that's more prosperity, uh, more that brings more prosperity to you and your and your group uh, in in the society. Mm. Yeah, that was crazy. I didn't think of that aspect, but what I got out of it was um, again. So we watch in the beginning, and after you see the planets and the the, uh, the Earth, etc., they show the drawing. With the spiral it has a mathematical equations and formulas on there and to me that is again the spiral of life the circle of life you know lion king status where you're born you die and in this destruction in this um chaos of what's going on even just inside of this bubble we don't know what's going on in the outside there's beauty in there there's there was love in here there was relationships bonding connections in there that is normal to our 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 life like despite the the ugly things, the bad things that go on outside in our world, we can still come back and reflect on the things we might have in our household, the people that we might have that are close to us, the friendships that we have that are valuable. Um, And even just sitting outside in nature and and enjoying the noise and the beauty and the serenity of that, that peace, that is what I found out of this movie, despite all of the ugliness that's going on, despite the the life and death, which is a, a normal but beautiful cycle as well, there is beauty in this world and it was reflecting in this movie. And I think that that reflects on our society today. So shout out to Netflix again for another fantastic anime. And this is another one for the books, just, you know, them doing their thing. I enjoy the movie thoroughly and I, I'm probably going to watch it again just to pick up on some stuff that I missed. Earlier. Hey, man, you miss, I miss, you miss all the key parts, bro. The breakdown yeah. of the bubbles, the five years, all that. Man. All like, that. Just that man. Like, right over my head. <laughs> <laughs> so, nah, man, yeah, no, we got to do this again. I mean, and, and then last off before we go, man, I, um, for, for everybody, as we, we always, we, again, we, we support black people 100%. So I'm going to mm-hmm. just tell everybody, you, you got to be mindful of who you listen to. Uh, when it comes to politics and 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 we shout out all the time uh, Black Star Network, Roland Martin Unfiltered. We shout out uh, Dr. Greg Carr and, and Professor Karen Hunter with uh, Nubia Narrative and In Class with Carr because they are giving us a history, a history lesson. But it's not belittling anybody because you don't know. It's saying, hey, this is the reality. So watch who you follow, because I know with social media and we're a part of it too, being on here that a lot of people uh we get emotional and I, and I myself have fell, fall into this too. 
And I yeah. even had to call Ren up and tell him um, where I did fall into that. And we don't read, you know, and I think reading is, is so essential because that is the, a lot of history is in a lot of books and scripts and cave drawings and all these things. We lay out as a species what it is that we have done, regardless of that, if it's just from one person's perspective or not, we all have the ability to um, read in some shape, way or form, whether it's the basic level or you know, a more uh, crit- uh, level to critique. But I just really want us to understand as black folks that we have to um, we always have to fight and be on every front. And I know it's tiring because I tell Ren all the time um, that it is very tiring, but one thing I don't want us to do is I don't want to allow 2020, the, uh, November of this year and then uh, 2024 elections to go to Republicans. And I'm going to say that from just myself personally. And I know people are probably like, here you go politically talking, but I will not uh, support any Republican. I will not support any person who is on the white nationalist agenda. And if we do not, if we do not go and vote, um, for our, we do not go and vote, not just on the national level, but also on the local level. And we don't get involved. And all we're going to do is sit here and talk to each other about what's not happening. Mm-hmm. And, then the last, and then the last thing I'll say before we get off here, because I know everybody's like, we went from anime to politics, is that I want every black person in every legal form, shape, way or form to be armed. And, and, be, and I want you to be armed because I don't want it to be a, a case of the coulda, woulda, shoulda uh, situation. No, you can't. You're not Rambo. You're not. You know, you're not going to be like this 100 percent marksman like Hawkeye. But I do want you to understand that white terrorism is real. Um, you know, Ren and, his, and and the people in Buffalo experienced that, um, which my heart goes out to them. But we just we, we see it time and time and time again. And we really have to understand that there is no we <laughs> in the United yes. States. It, it is it is it is us as a group. And we even got to fight our own internal struggles and then mm-hmm. them. And we got to make sure that we got to understand, as Dr. Greg Carr says, there is no good guy or bad guy. It's only interest. So if our interest is to be thriving the best way possible, then we got to vote people and not just vote them in and say, "Okay, go do your job. Vote them in just like your supervisor at work or you as a manager have to do to someone else as an employee and say, hey, did you take care of A, B and C? Oh, you didn't. Here goes the repercussions for you not doing so. And I just want to make sure that we know that. Uh, because at the end of the day, man, we got a platform. We got to say something. Uh, so it, it's great to be entertained. But us as black folks, we we we've we've succeeded in entertainment because it made white people feel comfortable and we got money for it. But but money doesn't equate to freedom. And a lot of people who are millionaires and billionaires that live in these mostly all white neighborhoods are still fearful of the police. When, when they riding around in they Phantom or they are they Lamborghini. So don't get it twisted. Don't think because you see on social media, somebody always going on trips and everything like that, mm-hmm. that it's all good because they got money. Because let them popo knock on that window <laughs> and show them the faux faux. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm still this color. Mm-hmm. And that's all I got to say. Facts. Listen, <laughs> first off, there is nothing political about that. That's, that's reality. That's not mm-hmm. politics. That's just reality. Fact. Forget about the Democrat Republican thing. To me, I feel like they both one and the same entity, you know, evil, bad, whatever, not even good guys, bad guys. As Dr. Greg Carr says, personally, we've experienced that terrorism here, white nationalist terrorism, domestic terrorism mm-hmm. right in my city. They just re- re-renovated and reopened at times. I haven't went. They just did it yesterday, even talking about it. I think they should have knocked the building down and redid another one. Did mm-hmm. a whole another one to pay respect to it because you're going there, you're going to have these memories. To your point, we need to be armed as black folks to protect ourselves, to make sure this doesn't happen again and be trust and believe in that hood. My old neighborhood is it's not going to happen. It's not going to be around two. it's not going to be around two. You're not going to get arrested peacefully. If you come in here playing with us, we're going to play with you, too. I, I'm telling you now it's going to happen. It's already been talked about. So. As black folks, we do have a voice. That is part of us having this this platform to talk about not only anime, but speak our our reality, our perspective, which we are not a we. We are we as in the governance structure. We're not talking social. We need to make sure we are all on coal. We need to make sure we are doing the right things as a people and continue to do that and don't get drawn up into this nonsense. And when we vote somebody in, like, you know, this midterm that's coming up, 
let's hold these people accountable when they get in these positions, when they get in these seats. And that is a must because if we don't, all is going to happen is what happened 200 years ago. And it might not be the same effect of saying slavery in the effect that you think of, but it'll be there in the form of laws which have already been established. It's already been there and they keep using these loopholes to go back and recreating the same cycle over and over and over. So let's hold each other accountable. Let's make sure we as a people are all on the same page. And I say we mean in the governance. I'm not talking social structure. We on the same page as that aspect. And we make sure that we pass that message along, which is what I do with my kids every day. Period. Fact, I'm concerned about. So, and, in the and in the neighborhood, man. And all, in the neighborhood. all the time. All the time. Um, it's been another great one for the books. That's a fact. Uh, We'll talk about what we're going to discuss on the next episode, but this yeah. is beautiful. I'm 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 proud to be black. I would never want to be anything else. Oh, look at look at the call. So she right. tied so almost that time. Hurry up and get off now. <laughs> yeah. So salute to everybody that comes and shows love. Thank you guys for coming up. You know what I mean? We'll see you again every Friday on Black Nerd Friday. Oh, that's a